Take a quick walk downtown and you can't miss them. Dozens of murals, some freshly painted, others that have been there for a while. On the walls of office buildings, theaters, shops, and parking lots. They're colorful and whimsical, or dark and mysterious, all open to interpretation. It feels really dramatic. Three menacing giant figures. I, I can't get anything more out of it. Some of the newer ones were created specifically for the Canvas Outdoor Museum Show, a two-week event that featured the work of artists from around the world. London and Amsterdam-based Dean Coleman, who goes by his middle name, Zeus, is one of them. I like to kind of uh, come to a place and see the wall and you can have a feeling for the surroundings. You know, this, this picture changed about three times since I've been here. The beautiful mermaid he created on this wall is a far cry from the street art that had him jumping fences and running from the cops as a kid back in England. About three or four in the morning, you'd sneak out and paint for a few hours, and then, uh, yeah, and it, you'd have to be a hell of a lot quicker. Unlike museum or gallery settings, where art lovers may linger for hours, murals like his mermaid are meant to be viewed by people passing by as they go about their business. Artists like Zeus have to have thick skin to keep from being hurt when the murals they work so hard on are blocked from view or even painted over. I think anything you know you do outside on a wall is ephemeral. It's it, it does it's not there to last, you know. If if it lasts and people like it, great. If somebody comes here tomorrow and paints something else over it, fantastic. And it probably will be switched out at some point. This black and white mural of 70s rock stars used to be right here, but it was replaced by this, which is pretty much its polar opposite. Not everyone will agree with the choices, but some say it's better that way, as long as murals like these cause people to slow down, even for a split second, and take a look. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. A steamy Saturday at Grassy Waters Preserve, and they're getting ready for a canoe trip. The preserve is on the edge of the Everglades, but it's also in the heart of suburbia, so you'll hear a mixture of sounds from passing traffic, the kind that cars and trucks make, and also the kind that comes from wildlife. It's the second kind that visitors like these come to hear. I'm gonna be guiding you guys out there on the Everglades experience today. Sam Dorfman, Grassy Waters Environmental Education Supervisor, is leading the trip. For me, coming out to a place like this uh, has a sort of um, primordial connection to uh, my, my senses. The people who are going on the journey with Sam come from a variety of backgrounds, but they're all hoping for a chance to lose themselves in a very different world. That's my daughter. Tom Zack, a middle school teacher, is sharing a canoe with his 24-year-old archaeologist daughter, Anna. I just love being out on the water. It's nice and serene and tranquil, and you can forget about the work week. Sisters Nabil and Cindy Noguera are both Miami social workers. Nabil works with very young, very sick patients in a pediatric hospice. On a day-to-day -day basis, it's uh, very emotional. It's an array of diagnoses, so they have more or less six months or less. But for a few hours at least, all that will be forgotten. as they glide out into grassy waters. It's a trip away from their troubles and also a journey back in time. These plants that you see here are a window into the past. You're looking at Jurassic Florida right here. Of course, back then, the modern conveniences we all take for granted were not around. No fiberglass boats, high-tech sunglasses, cell phones, and definitely no selfies. Still, out here in grassy waters, if you let yourself, it is possible to imagine the world as it was a very long time ago, as you sink hip deep into muddy water while tramping across a submerged island, or paddle past water lilies and razor sharp sawgrass. It is nothing short of magical. I try to implement, you know, on the weekends, something that will bring me peace. 
was very helpful to come out here because it allowed me to do that. It may not change anything in their day-to-day -day lives, but spending time out here and seeing all this will definitely give them something to think about when their pressures of life seem to be overwhelming. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. These are the proud members of the drumline at Faith's Place. From preschoolers to high school seniors, they all demand one thing of themselves and each other, precision. And there's no slacking off allowed here. Do it again. If you join this drum line, you're expected to be at every practice, on time, ready to work, focused and disciplined. So I need everybody to be what? Quiet. Say it again. Quiet. Noble Mays is the founder and director. What we try to do is teach teamwork and the focus and the discipline helps when they are working together as one as opposed to I'm an individual, I'm an individual and I just so happen to be on this drum line. The drum line they're on rehearses in a no frills community center in a low income neighborhood. They often compete against groups with more resources, plush rehearsal spaces, expensive equipment. But instead of discouraging the young musicians, that seems to motivate them even more. We're just it's like so determined to win and always be in first place to the point that we will practice for the longest. Nothing will stop us. That determination has paid off with countless wins all over the state. They also perform at public events and private functions, sometimes on steel drums, often as fundraisers to help keep the program going. Because of that, the kids are taught to appeal to many different types of audiences. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And they seem to catch on quickly to what works. And I like to smile because of my dimples. And what doesn't. Things like messing up, you don't, you don't run off the stage and just say, I'm not doing this. And when the people in the audience are with them, that, they say, makes it so much better. Because when I first get on stage, I feel so nervous and I feel like I'm going to break down. But when they smile at me, I feel like just relax and just play and do a great job. But while doing a great job on stage is highly valued, it's not the only place these kids are expected to shine. Hey, you don't have to see, there's going to be a P-R-O-B-L-E-M, what's that? Problem. Thank you. They're also required to keep their grades up. If they don't, they're not allowed to participate. It's not easy, but May says it's not supposed to be. We have instant Facebook, we have Instagram, so all of that uh, spoils the child without an adult even being present. It's just right away. They want their answers and they want their gratification right away, but here they have to work for it. Mays feels what they're giving the kids is a lifeline of sorts, a way to avoid the pitfalls of peer pressure. Saving them from all type of adversity that includes gang violence, drugs, uh, saving them from themselves. And it all starts here on the drum line. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV 18.